Hello, I'm uh, Vera Miranda, Senior Economist in the Directorate for Employment, Labour and Social Affairs of the OECD. And I will talk today about why it is important to invest in young people. So we all know that young people have been particularly affected by the economic crisis, right? They were often working in sectors that are hit hard by the pandemic, like, for instance, accommodation, food services, retail trade. And they were often working on a precarious contract. And as a result, many young people lost their jobs in the past year and a half. Others who recently finished education have struggled to find employment in the context of limited vacancies. And so in nearly all OECD countries, youth unemployment rates went upwards as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. Right? On average, across OECD countries, the youth unemployment rate reached 16.6% among 15 to 29-year-olds in the second quarter of 2020. Afterwards, it declined again to 11.5% in the fourth quarter of 2020, but this rate remains above the pre-crisis rate, and uh, currently more than 19 million young people are currently unemployed in the OECD area. Initially, unemployment rate rose considerably more among female young people than among male young people, but this gender gap has since closed. Labour market adjustments for young people often occurred through inactivity and unemployment. Whereas for older generations, these adjustments often occurred through either reduced working hours or, for instance, zero hours employment. Well, but at least they kept their contract with their employer. And so it's this loss of employment contracts among young people that significantly slows down the speed of labor market recovery for this group. So it's not surprising that the economic hardship is waiting on our young people. At an early point in their working lives, young people may be less able to draw, for instance, on savings or selling assets to be able to keep their pay, pay, paying their bills. And so our recent OECD Risk That Matters survey indeed found that 36% of 18 to 29 year olds reported financial difficulties since the onset of the pandemic. And this impact has been uneven among young people. Among those who responded to the Risk That Matter survey who identified themselves as belonging to a low social class, 61% reported that their household had been affected by job disruption, compared to 49% among young people from the middle class. And so these increases in youth unemployment rates have often come on top of existing structural challenges for young people to enter the labor market. Many countries, and including Brazil, had already persistently high levels of youth unemployment before the pandemic. We all know that the 2008 global financial crisis took a large young toll on young people. So it is important to learn from our mistakes. It took a full decade for the OECD youth employment rate to return to pre-crisis level, leaving important scars on young people's careers. And such long-term effects operate mainly through, through two channels. For those who are able to find employment when they enter the labor market, repeated uh, no, so sorry, for those who are unable to find employment when they enter the labor market, repeated spells in unemployment and inactivity weighed on their future uh, employment and earnings prospects. But even for those who do find a job, they can suffer long-lasting disadvantage, for example, if they're forced to accept lower-level starting positions, or if their mobility is comprised by more limited vacancies, or if they're able, less able to access training and promotion opportunities. And so uh, in two out of three OECD countries, highly educated young people are now more likely to be in low paid jobs than in high paid ones. And so for many young people, the impact of the crisis will only be temporary, but for many others, and in particular 
disadvantaged young people face an increased risk of both high and persistent unemployment, poor job qualities when they do find work, or uh, and a higher risk of social exclusion. And so specific attention to these groups is needed to ensure that they receive the support they need to thrive in life. And so when we look at the group of young people who are not in employment, education or training, what we call the needs, we see that these young people often have either low educational attainment, childcare responsibilities, ill health, intergenerational disadvantages. For instance, one third of all needs have not completed high school. Women, women are four times more likely to be need if they have small children. The incidence of poor health is five times higher for needs. And then finally, needs parents are twice as likely to have low education attainment or to be worthless. And so to avoid the mistakes that were made in the aftermath of the global financial crisis and also to prevent long-term scaring effects on youth labor market outcomes, but also other social economic outcomes, the OECD encourages its member countries to scale up uh, support for young people where needed. This means maintaining commitment to youth education, very important, promoting uh, better youth employment, and three, delivering quality jobs for young people. And we also need to make sure that young people are not left behind by global trends, right? Because digitalization and globalization may bring many new opportunities, but they also polarize the labor market. New forms of work, um, challenges, access to social protection system, but also basic labor, right, basic labor rights, training opportunities for an increasing share of young people. So these new forms of work really challenges the labor market participation of young people. And the OECD recently updated its Youth Action Plan, which provides the building blocks to promote a government-wide strategy to support young people. So not only the uh, Ministry of Labor or the Department of Social Affairs, no. Uh, what we need for young to support young people is a government-wide strategy. Uh, to support them. It includes employment and education policies, social policies, but also public governments uh, to make sure that the voice of young people uh, is heard and that their views are, are taken into account when developing um, policies for young people. And so we are supporting governments across OECD member countries to improve their youth policies and make sure that young people receive the support they need to thrive in life. And I thank you all uh, for listening to this very short talk. And I invite those who are interested to learn more about our work uh, to visit our OECD uh, webpage or subscribe to our social media challenge channels. Thank you very much.